not okay. This needs to stop now. Hey, come back here. Oh, shit. I thought it was E2. What was that? I don't know. Bilbo knocked the white bowl off the... Oh, shit. I forgot how to look back at you if you try to run out. No. Oh, fuck. It tricked me. You know, games kind of do that sometimes. Science is a liar sometimes. Yes, sometimes science is a liar. But... Sometimes and a smarter scientist comes along and makes an old scientist look like a stupid bitch. This is true. This is very, very true. Always Sunny in Philadelphia, if anybody wonders what I'm saying. They say. <laughs> yeah, that's from Always Sunny. Thanks, Mac. So, animals uh, animals that got the middle finger from evolution. This is a... this is a, Everyone's asked us to check out Casual Geographic for quite some time. So I've seen him on Facebook before, and they didn't properly credit the clip, I don't think, that I saw. And I think that's so nonsense. I didn't actually know who he was. I, I think that that is 100% I remember bullshit. what I saw. I was like, this seems pretty entertaining. I, I need we, to find more of this dude's stuff. We will credit He pulled it up, and I immediately recognized him because he's holding his microphone. Yeah. We are going to 100% properly credit Casual Geographic, and just know Casual Geographic... Uh, I've seen your work previously, love your work, and I can't wait to see more, and hopefully you all extract some information from this, and hopefully we do as well, so let's go ahead and hop right into it with uh, Casual Geographic and the animals that got the middle finger from evolution. Here we go. Evolution is a bitch named Emily. That's <laughs> it, that's the whole intro. Don't get me wrong, the concept of evolution is pretty cool. It's the reason giraffes get to flex their high in the entire animal kingdom. But there are just times where nature and evolution decide to team up and absolutely hoe an animal's entire existence. So here mm -hmm. are 10 animals that I personally think got done the dirtiest. It's not exactly in order, but obviously some animals oh, are going to get Oh, I know that that's that boar that others. has the and I say horns that, that grow if into were actually its skull in order, the if they probably don't, if they the don't ruin, Olympics for, or if they don't well, ruin let me them. explain. Octopus are highly intelligent, and scientists believe they have the same cognitive ability as a two-year-old human. Which might not seem impressive, but that means octopus are on the same IQ level as some dogs. They're even smart enough to use tools, whether it's using the tentacles of the venomous man of war as a weapon, which they actually do, or carrying a coconut <laughs> around to keep as that's, a travel-sized panic legit. room. Oh, damn. Yeah, I've seen them but do being that. being smart is the only thing they have going for them. First of all, most octopus come into the world as orphans. The mother octopus will spend months guarding and washing her nursery of up to 50,000 eggs. Since it's too dangerous to leave them alone, and since there's no daycare underwater, she often won't eat the entire time. Which means once the clutch of eggs are finally ready to hatch, the mother is shriveling, starving, and ready to become initials on a Twitter bio. The struggle doesn't Damn. end there. In fact, that's when it starts. Jesus. These babies the size of a grain of rice have to figure out life in an ocean full of animals that'll actually try to put an end to it. It's so bad that out of the 50,000 children, if more than two survive to adulthood, it's considered overachieving. That honestly wouldn't be a big wow. deal if nature didn't already nerf them with their lifespan. It's so ridiculously short that a majority of octopus species that live life to the fullest still won't be alive for their first birthday. Being an octopus wow. means you can be born on New they Year's, have that. a midlife crisis Me by neither. June, only to be a memory by October. Giving an animal high intelligence just to cut its life after one to two years just seems like an intentional dick move. Right? <laughs> and because they have no shell or no armor, they'd honestly be lucky to live that long. Having no real way to defend themselves means a good number of them end up a sea lion's chew toy or a dolphin's frisbee. To be fair, octopus do have camouflage. In some cases, highly toxic venom. But yeah, the yeah, part, dude, fly. that person right there. To be fair, octopus like, do have camouflage. It's oh my god! Don't even ask me why I'm why he's holding it. Why is he holding it? He dead. Yeah, that guy's fucking dead. That's a blue ringed octopus. That's one of the most venomous sea creatures you can come across. Oh, he dead. If he if if he or she ain't dead, yeah. Very 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 fucking dumb lucky. If yes. They're still alive. Yes. In some cases, or if they, at least if they manage not to be in the hospital on life support for like a month. I don't know how long you'd have to but be for in the there, most but part, they get bodied by most bit. of the ocean. To add insult to injury, every octopus you see is probably a virgin because once they get laid, they die. We already saw what happens to the mother, but where did daddy at? Once the male octopus mates, he basically just gives up on life. The male octopus that's cast in his V-card will swim around catatonically until he either gets torn up. It's like that scene, it's like that Zoidberg thing in uh, Futurama. It's just like, it's like, but I'm going to miss out on all of the fun. It's like, wait, what? Like, where is everybody? It's like, oh, once my species passes on its seed, they die. Look over at the beach, and the beach is just like covered in shells of these crab. They're just they're like, oh god, and just like, oh, 
Now I feel so lonely. I don't know what to do with all this. It's just like, and Fry's just like, don't worry, buddy. I'll teach you everything I know. <laughs> like, Jesus. Part by predators or dies of starvation as his body falls apart due to senescence. Mm. Not like it really matters because most female octopus are bigger than the males and sometimes they'll attack and cannibalize him during. But what yes. is for sure, if his date doesn't put Damn. him out of commission, he's like a praying mantis. Like praying mantis. Don't live long or a black the widow. They're alive, their entire existence is a jihad. Now you know why Squidward couldn't give a <laughs> if a <laughs> paid him. But at least with the octopus, it just seems to be really Fair. bad luck. They may be a victim of circumstance, but at least you get the idea that nature didn't go out of its way to screw them. Not like with this bird. Kiwi bird is probably the best Aww. proof that evolution ain't perfect. This tiny bird is actually part of the rat type family. And this cookout includes ostriches, emus, cassowaries, and the rhea. But unlike its bigger cousins, this bird that shares its name with a fruit is about 18 inches tall and no more than 7 pounds. It's kind of like having cousins 6, 3, 6, 4, and 6, 6, yet you came out looking like Tory Lanez. <laughs> so basically, this is the... This is the Chris Von Erich of the crew. I hate saying that, but the Von Erich family, okay. Imagine you have four brothers. One of them is six foot three, weighs about 230 pounds. One's about six foot four, weighs about 250 pounds. One is six foot seven and weighs about 280 pounds. And one's about six foot two and weighs about 220 pounds. You are five foot eight. And if you're lucky, you weigh, soaking wet, you weigh 150 pounds. I would purposefully, like, whenever I got my own home, like, custom build all the doorways in the house to be 5 foot 10 inches tall. So that all the bastards had to duck whenever they came over to visit. <laughs> yeah, here, Chris Von Eric, I'll, I'll show you, like, here he is standing next to, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. The, like here he is standing next to Carrie or uh, to his uh, brother. Yeah, that's Carrie. That's him standing next to his brother <laughs> Carrie, who's like a monster, a mammoth of a man. Like yeah, here they all are. There's David. There's a uh, uh, see. There's David, uh, Carrie. Uh, then there is ah oh, dang it. Dude, there's, but five brothers and then little Chris right here in the middle, and he didn't get that much taller. Yeah, I definitely built my house with low door frames just to make them out the duck when they came to visit me. Yeah, but sad. It's a sad story about the Von Erich family and the wrestling industry, specifically their dad, like mentally fucked them up. Oh. And when you read about their story and everything, it's very sad. Like from especially like from 1984 to 1993 in that span of ten years, four of the five brothers would be dead. It's very, very sad. And they're actually making a movie about it with, uh, uh, with, uh, friggin', uh, uh, what's his name? Zach Efron. He's gonna be playing, uh, one of the. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, that went away again whenever you clicked on the other screen. <laughs> yeah, it. I don't know why it's doing this. OBS is being stupid sometimes. If I gotta fix it, I'll fix it. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say, why did it ruin the vibe of the cute Kiwi bird? <laughs> No, I'm sad. In an <laughs> I'm sad. Well, kiwis are sad. Like it's sad what happens with kiwis, man. I mean, look at them. They're small, flightless little little puff balls. But they're so cute. I know they're cute, and I'd love to have one. But you know, evolution kind of gave them, you know, gave them the shaft. At least Locker, made yeah, them you cute. get it from a chair and yes. stay the same height. But of course, nature wasn't done screwing with this bird because, like its relatives, they can't fly. Totally flightless, and despite being related to ostriches, a Jurassic reject, and a bird that literally won a war against Australia, kiwi's about as defenseless as the fruit that got named after it. Basically, you're looking at a bird that can't bird. The kiwi is such light work that they can only survive on islands without any mammalian predators, because they're really a couple stray cats away from being put in the history oh. books. Go the other way. Go the other way. And somehow, run. That's not it. Because nature shrunk everything about this bird. Everything except the eggs they have to push out of their body. Oh. Despite being about 60 times smaller, kiwis have to deal with eggs nearly. Whoa! Look at the fucking chicken egg versus the kiwi egg. Yeah, that's pretty fucked. That's what, dude? That'd be equivalent to dude. That's about equivalent to what a human has to do, right there, man. So, so there's this. Uh... Oh my god. Okay, so uh, here's the thing: is like I'm a Christ I'm a Christian, right? E. Um, but there's this video that we were shown that's basically like proof that god is like the answer not evolution and it's like oh giraffes would have uh 
if, if they just evolved along Nick, like all their bro- blood would run to their brain and they would die when they bent down a drink. And I'm like, this. That's not how that works. Yeah. I was like, I, I understand what you're trying to do, but it's stupid. And I was like, and here's yeah. my counterpoint. If you're going to go with this kind of thing, then explain to me what the Kiwi did to make God think it deserves to have to lay an egg that big (laughs) compared to its size. I don't know. Honestly, the whole deal with... Okay. Because I believe that was... uh, I believe evolution has uh, some effects on things and the Kiwi egg is proof that it doesn't always work out. And and the truth with it is, like, I... I have my beliefs and everything. I believe in I believe in what I believe in, and that's my business. No, no one else's. But there's no arguing with the science of this. That the kiwi got screwed, mm-hmm. man. That and I don't think it's because they pissed off God or anything like that. I think it's just the fact that you know, much like how there are, much like how like everything else on this planet sort of has to fend for itself once it gets out here. It's like, ain't much it can do. Hopefully cloacas are more malleable than vaginas and they just don't have that bad of a time with it. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I guarantee you, ca- you know, Casual's about to tell us all about it. The same size as an ostrich's. And at 20% of its body weight, that would be like the average woman birthing a 35-pound baby with the same... Oh! Yeah. I take that back! Dude, that's e- oh Jesus Christ! Equipment. It's such a hell to live that the egg actually rearranges the bird's organs and stretches its rib cage. There's too many things wrong with them for me not to think nature had serious beef with this bird, <laughs> especially when you realize the kiwi's closest ancestor was the elephant bird, which was about 10 feet, 1,600 pounds. So yeah, they got nerfed bad. At least they didn't get hit as hard as, say, the sloth. For being completely honest here, the sloth has almost nothing going for it. Because they (laughs) insisted on eating nothing but leaves, their diet makes them one of the slowest animals on the planet. Because they physically can't afford to spend energy they don't have, because going into debt would mean death. It's to the point where baby sloths have to quite literally hold on for dear life, because if it falls to the jungle floor, the mother likely won't waste the energy trying to get it back. And that's because if you're a sloth, leaving this tree is the most dangerous thing you'll ever do. Sloths only poop about once a week, and when they do, they'll climb out of the tree and get on the ground to do it. But they don't just drop a deuce from the trees, I couldn't tell you nobody knows what goes on in their heads. <laughs> it's like the whole thing about salmon having to swim upstream. It's like, why? But this means about half of all sloth deaths involve getting clapped on the toilet like Elvis. One thing sloths have going for them is that they're so mind-numbingly slow that algae actually grows on them, giving them free camouflage. But there's a catch. (laughs) There is always a catch. When one of your biggest ops is an eagle with quite literally some of the best eyes in the world, wearing a moss blanket isn't going to amount to too much. And you know evolution was accurate. Oh, that one to this day gets me. Look at the size of this like it freaking isn't thing. Too much. It's like, yeah. look at that. Look at that. Just the comes eagle in is just... like twice the size of the damn sloth. Yeah. That's a big eagle. And he just <laughs> just gulps that fucker. Well, see, out that's the, the thing too. Like everybody, like um, even though the eagle, the bald eagle is like one of our, it's like our national bird. You know, everybody knows what one looks like in America, right? Everybody assumes bald eagles like those big. No, no. bald eagles are freaking massive. Yeah, they're fucking big, man. Yes, like, they like, are. If you've never seen massive. one in person, they're big ass birds. They are huge, man. Like, and they are nothing to mess they're with. They're majestic as shit. <laughs> yeah, you see one flying, you're just like, wow. Yeah. And you know evolution was actively f***ing with them because sloths are actually really good swimmers and can hold their breath for 40 minutes longer than dolphins and seals. But it means almost nothing when most of the time they go swimming is by accident when they fall out of a tree. Dumb. And that weak ass doggy paddle might save them from drowning but it won't save them from getting murked by an anaconda or a black cane. <laughs> but the really sad part is sloths could actually be way better than this. Its close relatives the armadillo and anteater are able to put the same claws that it has to good use and anteaters have even been known to swing on jaguars. You have a homicidal vacuum cleaner that has put jaguars and people in coffins. And then you have a moss blanket <laughs> with a face. And just like the kiwi, the sloth used to be better than this. Megatherium, aka the giant ground sloth, was in the same weight class as elephants and they actually knew how to use those claws. So much so that if Ice Age were realistic, Sid would have worn Diego's ass like a fur coat. But its massive size ended up screwing it in the end as they basically got hunted into oblivion by humans. Leaving us now with the virtually defenseless, dead-eyed, slower than molasses algae apartment that we call the sloth. You know that thing on TV where it's like someone gets a genie that no, I've he- have but... heard that a sloth can still fuck you up with his claws. Like, even though they're so fucking slow, apparently, like, their claws are ridiculous, ridiculously sharp and mm-hmm. they are not completely non-dangerous. 
but all you have to do is just avoid, just pick them up from their back, and basically, you got them. Like, the, they can't do anything. They can't reach you. Or just, you know, walk away quickly because they're a fucking sloth. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just like, it's like, he stole my fruit. I would say they're probably more dangerous from falling out of the tree on people's heads. Probably. I mean, dude, they, poor sloths. You just hear trees wrestling above and look up and you just get a face full of, like, fuzz and claws and it's just like... <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, this right here is just, it's like, I want to be able to fly. You're dying of cancer. Of course you can be my co-pilot for your dying wish. Yay! He's so happy he gets to fly. I guess that's the way the genie got around. It's like it gave him cancer and made him a grant a wish. <laughs> that's so messed up. Yeah. Only does so in a way that horribly bends them over in the end, and the moral's supposed to be careful what you wish for. That basically sums up this next animal because it looks like it got finessed by a genie in one of the most disrespectful ways. I wish I didn't have ways. to clean my room anymore. Congratulations, Aww. your house burned down. Aww. It's possible. This is a fiddler crab. Male fiddlers have one giant brawlic claw whose only purpose is to get a female's attention. Bee crabs choose their mate based on who has the biggest. Like, hey, baby, check it out. It's like basically like. Look, like, look at these muscles. Like, let me see your other muscles. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> bit, bit, be like, what's up with you, girl? What's, where's your left arm? Eh. I'm just like, hello. How you doing? I'm gonna check this out. I've seen fiddler crabs though. These things are these things are pretty cool. Yeah. This claw and therefore can pass the best genes to her clutch of eggs. The problem is that is literally the only thing this claw is good for. Because that claw is too big to pick up food, the male fiddler crab can only feed himself with that smaller claw. That massive claw is actually a disability that means the males either eat half the food or take twice as long as the females. The only problem with that is that these crabs only eat during low tide, and the longer the crab spends eating, the more likely they are to end up as someone else's main dish. <laughs> In the evolutionary arms race for female validation, the male fiddler crab is more likely to end up getting eaten by gulls, raccoons, reptiles, and sometimes even bigger crabs. Since the females enable this by being attracted to the bigger but less functional claws, the fiddler is now trapped in a vicious cycle. By preferring males with a trait that quite literally gets them put on a shirt, the females indirectly screw the next generation. Gotta be careful what you wish for, especially if you're this next animal. Because the peacock has the same problem on Aww. steroids. We can all agree that the peacock is the biggest flexor in the animal kingdom, yeah. and rightfully so. And just I mean, like they the literally crab, named... Every like showing off after that as like, peacocking peacocking yeah it's like all kinds of animals do that but like uh, that's the one that does it the flashiest so that's what the name got uh but i love its feathers from. Its feathers are beautiful yeah every other aspect of life bigger is most certainly better the more colorful and eye-catching the better the peacock's chances at backing a pea head They'll even shimmy their tail feathers in a way that hypnotizes any female watching. But like I said, never make a deal with a genie. Because the good news is a peacock showing off will always be the center of attention. The bad news is sometimes that attention comes from a 700 pound assault <laughs> weapon with stripes. And because those yeah. tail feathers are so heavy, not only can't the peacock see behind itself, even if it does see death coming, it takes them longer to get off the ground and out of the tiger's reach. Just like with the crab, the peacock's biggest flex is often what gets it buried. In a cruel twist from fate, the peacocks that are safer from tigers are usually the ones that get less attention from females. So by having a preference, the peahens doom their future children to a fate of ultimately ending up as a tiger's toothpick. The peacock and fiddler both got handed massive L's from nature, but at least you can see the thought process behind it. Having huge claws and fancy feathers attracts females, so technically it does serve a purpose. In yeah. comparison, the Luna Moth got shafted for no reason at all. To make a long uh, story short, adult Luna Moths don't fuzzy. have a mouth and therefore can't eat. The only thing keeping them alive is the energy they store as caterpillars, but once that runs out, so does their time. Luna Moths live for about a week, just long enough to reproduce and doom their children to the same fate of a non-consensual hunger strike. If you ask Google why the Luna Moth doesn't have a mouth, it'll tell you because its only purpose is to mate. Which is really nature not giving a fraction of a f about them. Yeah, that's cruel. Question is, what could yeah. possibly be crueler? Well, if you know what this is, you probably have the answer. This oh, no. is a sea louse. It's a oh. member of the Caligidae family of copepods, which is this. basically just a bunch of small crustaceans. But you probably noticed that for the peacocks and the crabs, it was the guys getting the worst of it. Apparently, nature believes in a weird form of equality because right now it's up for the girls. The horror show starts when a male sea louse kidnaps a much smaller female and then forcibly drags her into what I can only describe as a crustacean sex dungeon, where what he can have up to 20 other victims also trapped. It's at this moment where this movie loses its rating because the male will forcibly impregnate every last female in his burrow and this often involves penetrating her abdomen. But don't worry, it gets worse. As her brood of children that she never asked for begin to grow, they decide to start eating their way out. 
Eventually, yeah. the mother's body splits open as her nursery of psychopaths rush out of her now mutilated husk of a corpse. This might be one of the only times where the babies abort the mother. She doesn't even really get to give birth, her children just bring her death. You might be wondering why evolution would even give this nonsense the green light. Well, the newborn sea loss are entering an ocean full of danger and having a full meal before they make it out on our own apparently increases their chance of survival. And by cannibalizing their own mother, it's basically a home-cooked meal. Somehow, Jesus. this isn't even the worst birth on this list. That title belongs to the hyena yeah, because straight up death story. is actually better than what they- That is horrible. Yeah, I've heard weird things about the hyenas. Yeah, these these little bastards are they go through. Female hyenas evolved a pseudo penis that's so similar to the real thing, it's actually difficult to tell males and females apart. This is actually a female. Only problem is it's not just for show, they actually have to give birth to that thing. And yes, it's every bit as painful as you think. And just a sub Oh, oh. Oh. That yeah. I passed a kidney stone one time. Kidney stone was about, I would say, about the size of a small pea. Like a small, like, and... It... It was one of the most painful experiences of my entire life. It hurt for, like, a solid, like, three days afterwards. And... Yeah, that... Ooh. Hey, I hope she had a hope she had a uh, what's it called an epidural. Somehow make it even worse relative to the mother's size. Hyenas have to give birth to the largest cubs of any carnivore, and they have to do it through a penis. A good amount of first-time mothers don't even survive this because the process involves rupturing and splitting open the pseudo to make it easier for the cubs. <sighs> but the cubs don't get it easy either. About 60% of hyena cubs will suffocate on the way out and become past tense before technically even joining the present. Damn. And you would think because this directly affects the mother and the cub that evolution would have patched this. But apparently nature and Lion King have something in common when it comes to doing hyenas dirty. Yeah. Fair enough. But if we're talking about an animal that got done dirty, the this boar. picture kind of speaks for itself. Matter of fact, this is probably going to be the thumbnail because this is nature at its grimiest. A lot of y'all probably knew this animal was coming just from reading the title, but for those of you that didn't, that was the skull of the Babarusa. It's a wild pig found in Indonesian islands like Sulawesi. If you already knew that, it's probably because of those teeth. Those tusks penetrate out of its snout only to do a complete 180 and head right back towards its face. If the male Babarusa can't wear down this hellish overbite or he doesn't lose them in a fight, then the teeth will end up growing right back into his head, penetrating the skull and ultimately piercing the brain. But the worst part of it all is that by the time it gets clapped by its own dental plan, the Babarusa's probably already had children and therefore passed on its bullshit to its kids. It's a lot like Parkinson's. Okay, hear me out. The problem with Parkinson's is that it usually develops late in life, usually around the age of 60. And patients can have it for years without being diagnosed. So by the time they do find out, it's possible they could have already had kids and grandkids that they could have passed it off to. Ooh. See the problem, right? The only good thing is that it's somewhat rare for a child to inherit Parkinson's from their parents. The Babarusa, not so lucky. And as long as females find big tusks attractive, and as long as the tusks only murk them after they've had babies, this pig is going to be screwed eternally and evolution can't even stop it. But when you talk about being sodomized by the fleshy phallus of nature, you're probably talking about cheetahs. If you watch Tier Zoo, if you're watching this, you probably do. You probably heard him say that cheetahs are F-tier garbage that either need to be buffed or just vaulted out of their misery. I love cheetahs, I really do, but out of every animal on this list, evolution might have bodied the cheetah the hardest, and for one simple reason. Cheetahs are really fast. That is all they have. Yeah. Cheetahs are a textbook example of why you should never dump all your evolution points in one skill, because you'll just get bent over in every other aspect of life. Because they're built for speed and absolutely nothing else, cheetahs often get bullied by other predators, especially lions and hyenas. And because cheetahs have to expend so much energy just to make a kill, it forces them to rest right after, which makes it really easy for other animals to just step in and run their pockets. Yeah. Oh my god. For real, if you're a cat and a bird that literally only eats the dead is able to run you off, you got a lot of problems. The worst part is, cheetahs could easily avoid all of this. Lepers are also lightweight, solitary hunters that occasionally get their food stolen, but they're able to carry their kills up in trees where they can't get harassed by scavengers. But in the evolutionary race for speed, cheetahs evolved non-retractable claws to use as cleats to keep traction while running. Which is why cheetahs can't climb trees, so they gotta get violated on the ground. Cheetahs are such pushovers <laughs> that one hyena can successfully rob several cheetahs right in their face and then dare them to do something about it. Yeah. Cheetahs compromised everything for speed, so now they get to speed run through life. About 70% of cheetah cubs born in the wild will be six feet under before their first birthday. And just to add on to that, because why the hell not, thanks to genetic bottleneck, a majority of the cheetah population is highly inbred. What you're looking at is a cat that doesn't really know how to cat. 
because instead of roaring like lions, tigers, and leopards, the best this spotted doormat can do is chirp like a bird. Matter of fact, if you YouTube it real quick, you'll find they make every sound that isn't a roar. <laughs> And that's how you know evolution would have to be them. Cheetahs have been around for about 3 million years and decided they were just gonna IM speed their way through life. And because of that, unless it's a 100 meter dash or a bird call contest, this overgrown house cat loses every single time. Obviously, there's a lot of good things yeah, about Yeah, and see, I've heard, um, to... despite how fast they are, if they somehow fuck up and they don't catch their prey, a lot of the times they'll die right after because of that because they have to replenish their energy and they basically expend almost all of their energy trying to catch something. Yeah, it it made one of my favorite I, I remember seeing that low tier that tier video of like of cheetahs and it made one of my favorite comedians like one of my favorite bits he ever did obsolete because it was Richard Pryor talking about cheetahs like out in the wild he's just like Man, a Cape Buffalo is like the baddest motherfucker on four hooves. And cheetahs, you don't even see them. Like, all you see is dust. You, like, see them limbering up and everything. Be like, yeah, get your ass out the car. Yeah, bring a camera with you. I'm going to eat all that shit. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, you see them cheetahs just, like, sitting there. They see the Cape Buffalo starting to run away. And they're just like, you want to go get one of them buffaloes? Nah, man, they're too close, shit. Let's give them about a hundred yards. They like look at each other and be like, "How's the wife and family, man?" Oh, they're good. They're good. They about far enough now. You want to go get them? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Just gone, and uh, it it ruins that bit for me, and I hate that. But hey, nature's nature's not not very friendly. Nature is cruel justify the abuse they go through which is probably why a majority of cheetahs in captivity experience severe anxiety so bad that prevents them from mating and they need an emotional support dog no. cute. don't get me wrong but it's another reason why cheetahs are dangerously close to being the pandas of cats and that's not something anyone wants to be and don't get it twisted i don't enjoy roasting cheetahs i actually really love them but if nature has favorites this cheetos mascot isn't one of them and those are 10 animals that got the middle finger from evolution i'm not gonna lie to you this video was low-key a pain to make so if you like the video and you'd like to support this channel, my Patreon's gonna be in the description. But please, please, don't give money if you can't afford it. Because honestly, I don't need money. I just wanted to cover my crippling Wendy's addiction. Subscribing hey, doesn't cost you anything, so um, understandable. Think about it. Wendy's is pretty good around here, bro. So oh yeah, must have a good one. We got a too. great Wendy's. Yeah. So yeah, so Wendy's is like the only restaurant that I go to, like. Um, consistently that like never really gives me anything that I, I'm just like oh this is not good today like yeah yeah I've, I've rarely had that there's been one like, or McDonald's two McDonald's is like basically 60-40 like 60% of the time it's pretty good and 40% of the time it's just like this isn't very good this time yeah and like uh, cookout used to be almost 100% and like, here lately they've gone to like 0% like Damn. nothing I get from cookout is like ever good anymore Taco Bell's like probably the second next to Wendy's. Like they're probably like 90 10. Like 10 percent of the time, I'll get something from Taco Bell that I'm just like, someone half-assed this. Yeah, but, like most of the time it's pretty good. That. Um, but Wendy's, I'm like, I'm hardly ever disappointed by Wendy's that I can remember. I'll say this: the Wendy's and the McDonald's in my hometown, like A tier, like A and S tier, easily. A tier McDonald's because like, every now and again I've gone through there and I've got like shit service. The Wendy's up in my hometown in Wise never had a bad experience there, never once. And it's the same place, the same like the like, same building and everything. I drive through there, like everything's just so speedy, so fast, and they're uh, yeah, they do great work. And I would say consistently across the board, Wendy's has the best overall service and food across the board in terms of fast food restaurants that I like. And I can agree with Casual Geographic of like, I don't have a crippling Wendy's addiction, but Wendy's is is my, if I had to choose like a consistently best place to go to be guaranteed to get some good food, Wendy's. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. how I feel. And then there's Popeye's. Uh, Popeye's is pretty good too. Popeye's I've had very few very bad, uh, I've had very few uh, bad uh, instances there. I'd say 
that for me is like 95 and see, I've heard people say that the one in, in Johnson City is not quite as good oh, that one's god awful dude yeah. I hate that one. I hate going through that yeah, one but the one in Bristol they, they know what's up Yes, and the one in Kingsport's okay. The one in Kingsport, I would say, that one. yeah, that one I would give like a 70-30 in terms of its consistency, but the one we have here in Bristol, dude, easily like a 95. I believe why orcas are the most disrespectful animals on the planet may be what I saw a clip from. from here ah, okay, okay. Now that I see that. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. The only thing better than getting educated is getting educated with a little bit of comedy thrown in, too. So. And there's plenty of that in this. Casual Geographic knows what's up, and we love watching his work. And honestly, if y'all want to see us watch more, ca react, react more Casual Geographic, feel free to let us know, because this shit's fire, dude. And I can see why... The best way to let us grown. know is by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. Oh, yeah. Hit that like button down there, because that's the only way we're going to know that this is working. But for now, everybody, I think that is going to do it. Uh, if y'all want to see more Casual Geographic, click his name in the title of the video. If you want to see more from us, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. Y'all know the whole deal. And until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all take care, everybody. Peace.